The Philadelphia Eagles have got to sign Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. What is going on, guys? Boy, Joey Shakes, time to come to you guys with a video right now. So I want to go over a couple things. And uh, one is uh, Chauncey Garner Johnson needs this, uh, this extension. Um, it was actually funny the other day because uh, Chauncey Garner Johnson, before he went to bed, apparently he put up a tweet about Jonathan Gannon. Gannon said a lot of stuff at the press conference at the combine, and it looked like Chauncey just had couldn't really hold it in anymore. <laughs> So it was it was pretty funny. Uh, Chauncey pretty much was like, you ain't put us in position to make plays. <laughs> you know, like, I really like how the players are starting to come out and talk about this. And Chauncey has been the only one that has really said anything about this whole thing. Now, I have to give Chauncey respect because during the season last year, you know, you don't want to see, you don't really want to say this during the season. You know, you don't want to cause a, a, you know, uh, a change in your locker room, a shift, or you know, developing yourself, de developing yourself as a cancer that's causing trouble in the locker room because you know players are frustrated with Jonathan Gann, just like last year or this early this year with Fletcher Cox is like I'm paying, you know, I'm playing seventy percent of the snaps. Like I don't know what you got, you know, he he threw you know Jonathan Gannon under the bus for a lot of things. You know the players, you know, there was rumors this past year early in the season, I think by OTA's training camp of last year, that players during these games um, were going up to Gannon to, for feedback. I mean, the players were giving Gannon feedback on how to use them in this defense, and I think it just came to a point where Gannon just where you either use guys the right way or he has such a great defense with how many guys he had in, on this defense this past year that you know players have bailed him out nonstop every single game. I don't care that Chauncey put this out because it's the truth. It's not like he said anything bad. It's not like he made fun of Gannon or he said something about his family or something like that. All he said was he doesn't know how to use his players. Simple as that. So you have to sign this guy. Chauncey Garner Johnson, if he hits the open market, man, it's going to be a bummer if he does. But high expectation, high priority for the Philadelphia Eagles that they're going to get this done. Okay, this should get done. I don't see why it shouldn't. Okay, what is he, 24 years old? I mean, a, a trade, you give up a fourth and a seventh. Whatever the, the, the draft capital was, the, the trade for him, I mean, not only can he play nickel, play safety, I mean, he wants to get, be the highest paid safety, and he probably deserves it. I mean, he tied in interceptions this year for most interceptions, and, you know, he is acting like a Philadelphia Eagles fan right now. And obviously, you know, I mean, it was a very simple thing that he said on Twitter about Gannon. You know, it was the point where I'm watching Gannon's combine press conference and he's like telling everybody that I don't want to be asked any more Super Bowl questions because he's embarrassed about the job that he did and he doesn't want to explain himself. He has just said the same old answer every single time. And I think... Some people started to get really pissed off because he was saying the same things like, oh, you know, you know, there were a lot happened in that game and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, he really didn't even say specifics on like what went wrong um, besides that stupid Peter King interview he had where he played cover zero. He played cover zero in red zone against Kansas City. Like, like, ugh, Jesus, I, I, I it just baffles my mind. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get over it, man. But, you know, like. This defense was so loaded this past year, and it just really pissed me off how everything just ended. You know, getting to the game is great, but winning it would, would have been a lot better. And now players are starting to speak their minds. And if Chauncey Garner-Johnson is the guy that's going to do that, I'm perfectly fine. And I hate when these stupid fans, these, these low idiots of society have to, every time an NFL player speaks out about something, it's always like, oh, he's doing the wrong thing or he shouldn't say that. Just like A.J. Brown, like last week, you know, he was on that podcast last week, like, oh, wherever Jalen goes, I'm going, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you don't pay that man, that's where I'm going. And people made a big freaking deal about it. Like, let these guys talk their talk. Like, why does everyone take everything so literal? You know, it's just... We have to follow the damn rules everywhere we go in life. It's just, that's just, it's stupid. 
it's it's just stupid. Like, why are people going to censor these NFL players to say what they want? Who cares? Who gives a crap? You know what I mean? Like, everyone's got something to say. But I give, like I said, I give Chauncey more respect because he didn't really say this during the season, or you know, uh, he went to Gann on the sideline and yelled at him, or something. You know what I mean? Like, none of that ever happened because the team came first and they knew that they were all in a special place. And obviously, when you're winning. You're not really giving a crap about make stirring up any drama when you're winning at the same time. So when it comes down to it, guys, you know, like I have no problem with Chauncey said. Like at this point, like people are trying to like censor him from like, oh, he shouldn't have said that. Like, well, what's the what's the problem about a player talking about a coach that's not here anymore that literally has failed this defense, literally looked great on paper, and didn't use every single player to his advantage and doesn't know football one-on-one on defense and what to do on certain plays, whether it's red zone defense, whether it's third and short, what are you doing on third and 16, third and 30, stupid crap like that, you know, and I was worried every single week and people were telling me, oh, you know, we're winning, what does it matter? And I said, yeah, I get it, but, you know, like, He's given quarterbacks way too much respect, and that's just been the big issue. Last year, from Derek Carr to Justin Herbert, what they did to us, and now going to this year, and it's just like you're facing the best team in the AFC, and they and they literally just out-coached you. You literally like sat there embarrassed on stage all by yourself, stage fright, and just didn't know what to do. I mean, you didn't do anything. Um, so I give Chauncey all the respect. I give all, I give, because he represents us, okay? He represents us and how frustrated we are, okay? If we can't get our, our, you know, if we can't get our voice out there, these players will do that for us, and Chauncey will definitely do that. So I'm expecting a big extension. I don't care how much it costs. He should be the top safety, best, best, you know, highest paid safety in the league. I want him here for years to come. That's what's going to happen with Chauncey, and I hope it happens. So that's all I got to say about it. Now, people were making a big deal about it. Like, you know, like people got to stop. Like, you know, these guys have a voice too. They're going to say what they want. I mean, the coach isn't here anymore. So who cares? Who gives a crap if he's if he if Gans not even in the building? Okay, what does it matter what somebody says about a coach? Who gives a crap? So that's all I gotta say. I give Chauncey so much credit, man. So much credit. Pay that man. Get him in Philadelphia for the rest of his career. I want him to retire a Philadelphia Eagle. No joke. You know, <clears throat> gotta happen. Gotta happen. Um, not the only news we had today, obviously, with Chauncey Garner Johnson's tweet. So he went back to sleep after that. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, and we have some news on Jalen Carter, man. Uh, apparently, there's like a warrant out for his arrest for something in January with reckless driving, uh, reckless driving, racing, um, got his teammate killed. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know all of the... Um, I don't really know everything. So this is this is of the report that came out about it. So it says, as a result of the ongoing investigation to the January 15th, 2023 fatal crash that occurred in 900 block of Barnett Skulls Road, the athens Clark County Police Department has secured arrest warrants for Jalen Carter, 21, for reckless driving and racing. The investigation uh, found that Ch uh, Chandler LaCroix, driver of the 2021 Ford, e Expe uh, the Ford Expedition, and Jalen Carter, driver of the 2021 Jeep Trackhawk, were operating their vehicles in a manner consistent uh, with racing and shortly after leaving the downtown Athena Arena about 2.30 a.m. The evidence demonstrates that both vehicles switched between lanes... Uh, drove in the center turn lane, drove in opposite lanes, travel overtook other motorists, and drove at high rates of speed. In an apparent attempt uh, to outdistance each other, evidence indicated that shortly before the crash, the expedition was traveling at about 104 miles per hour. Now, that wasn't the car that he was driving. That was the other guy. The toxicology report indicated that LaCro uh, LaCroix's blood alcohol concentration was 0 0.197, 0 0.197, and you're racing under that influence. That's crazy. At the time of the crash, investigators determined that alcohol impairment, racing, reckless driving, and speed were significant contributions factors to the crash. Now, how Jalen Carter is involved in this is that he apparently told the cops two different stories, or his story did change over time. 
One, it was he was a mile away from the race driving near LaCroix, and the other time he talked about it, he was racing right next to the car. So he's given the cops, I think, like two different answers over, you know, the amount of time, I guess. So I don't know. It says there's a warrant out for his arrest. I don't know if that's even true, but if we thought Jalen Carter had outside, you know, off-the-field issues that, you know, draft analysis were talking about, then I guess it's true. And when it comes to the Philadelphia, now, he didn't, I don't think he, I don't know if he crashed, I didn't read that he killed anybody or he had somebody in his car. I don't know if he crashed. I mean, he was racing somebody that the other guy was at a high blood alcohol uh, content, and I don't think anything happened to Jalen Carter but I think he was involved in it. So how much trouble is he going to get into? I don't know. This might affect a lot. Um, or there might be a team that might take a chance early in the top 10, but this could lead him out of the top 10. This could even help the Eagles even more. And I know some Eagle fans are probably going to say, well, no, we're not, we're, not doing, we're not dealing with that. But obviously with the Philadelphia Eagles, they're going to do their homework. They're going to hire some PIs. They're going to look into this whole entire thing if they really have that much if they really have much interest in him. Now, we know that Jalen Carter is not going to be working out at the Combine. Yes, Jalen Carter will not be working out at the Combine at all. He'll have his interview at 10.30 in the morning, and I think that's it. He's not working out. He's not doing anything, um, and that's the decision he made on his own. But when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles, they like to give second chances, and they've done it before. We've done it in the past, guys. Did it with, obviously, Michael Vick and all that happened with him. Um, and uh, Philadelphia wasn't happy on 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 hiring on on having him as a starting quarterback and bringing him back and you know uh, you know giving him a second chance you know at the bottom of the roster and kind of building himself up again as a person and a player that everybody loved in in, in uh, Atlanta so much. So the Eagles like to do things like that, and I know I I definitely believe in second chances. You know I, I believe when people make mistakes, they make stupid mistakes. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is, you know, it's your first round pick, you know, this isn't a player in the fourth round. So you got to be very careful. Uh, the Eagles have to do their homework on him and either the Eagles will get him or another team will get him and be very happy to get him at, at a, you know, later round because he's probably going to drop. This probably will make him drop pretty much. Um, you know, but the Eagles will do their homework. They'll hire PIs. They'll find out all the information, what's going on with Jalen Carter and his legal stuff and what's going on. So I'm hearing that there's a warrant out for his arrest, but then I don't know. And then, then some people are saying that's, that's, that information is not true because he's has an interview tomorrow at the combine. So I don't get what's going on right now. So they're they're investigating this whole thing from January of this of the street racing, um, and that's pretty much it. So that's the news on Jalen Carter. Obviously, the best defensive tackle in this draft, and um, you know a lot going for him. And there's a lot of you know this is what happens. You do stuff like this, you get caught by the cops, or you're doing anything wrong illegally, um, you're gonna get in trouble for it, and it's gonna definitely affect your draft stock, especially if you're the best player. So I, I mean, I don't, I don't really see him. I don't really see him being in the top 10 anymore, really, even after this. So the Eagles might have an easy, you know, unless somebody moves up in front of the Eagles because obviously teams know as of right now that the Eagles are very good you know, at drafting in the trenches. They love drafting guys in the trenches and, you know, uh, other teams do their homework on the Eagles and what they and what they could get. But they know they love offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Um, so this could drop him. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about Jalen Carter. Do you think his stock is going to drop? And secondly, um, the Chauncey Gardner-Johnson um, situation. You know, what did he say was the right thing um, on Twitter about Jonathan Gannon? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you against it? And I, I respect everybody's, you know, opinion on it. You know, it is what it is. But every time an NFL player opens their mouth, like it's like it's like they're not allowed to say something after the coach leaves. Like I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I felt like they did that to A.J. Brown last week, and they took it so literal. It was just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, you guys let me know in the comment section below. See you guys on the next one. Shakes what up, follow us. Peace out, guys. Peace.